In this episode, we take an in-depth look at the Giant Squid Audio Lab's omnidirectional mono lav mic. Check this out. Let's start with a quick run through of the physical characteristics of the mic. So this is the Giant Squid Audio Lab omnidirectional lavalier mic, uh, mono mic. It is not the stereo version. And typically this is the one that I would recommend for almost everyone. There are the others that they offer, the stereo version, which is best if you're gonna be recording two people because it has two heads instead of just one. It's not, um, let's not, I'm not gonna get into a big discussion of stereo versus mono here, but for when you're recording voice, typically you would just record a mono signal um, unless you're doing something really fancy. And if that's the case, you're probably not using a $40 microphone. So secondly, I recommend the omnidirectional over the cardioid pattern mic that Giant Squid offers. The uh, cardioid is really kind of a special purpose mic and cardioid lavalier mics are pretty tricky to use and they're really only for specific certain circumstances. And that is if you're in a situation where there is a lot of noise in the background. And um, this is not just for your typical room that has echo. That the, the cardioid is probably not the right choice to, to manage that as well, but it's more like if you're in a factory or if you're outdoors at an airport or something like that. That's what it's really designed for, I guess. So again, for most people, I would go with the omnidirectional mono mic. Now, this is what it's com what it looks like compared to the old Giant Squid. The old Giant Squid, it turns out, was actually made out of a gun shell. That's what the body is here. And then it had this adhesive that attached this, permanently attaches this alligator clip. And then the capsule is just sitting here on top. Not the most professional looking mic, although it did sound pretty good. The new version definitely looks much more professional. It has the removable clip, as we'd mentioned in the short version of the review. And uh, this removable clip is super helpful because then you can adjust the mic to fit on your particular talent, whether they, you know, regardless of what they're wearing and whether you want to kind of mount it on the left, the right, center, they have a men's or a women's button down shirt. You've got, you've got all those options. The cable itself is about 1.5 meters. That's five feet and is, in my opinion, just about the perfect length. If you're gonna be connecting it directly to your camera, you will need to consider some sort of extension. And it can, this will work with, with uh, a lot of cameras, definitely with most DSLRs, because this mic requires what's called plug-in power. That's 1.5 to nine volts. And most DSLRs and most video cameras, the larger video cameras, provide plug-in power. So you'll wanna check the specs on your particular camera if you have any questions about whether or not it can support that. Now, in my case, I use it with a Zoom H1, and I find this angled connector very handy for that because when I plug it in, it goes in like that, and it fits very nicely into a pocket once with that angled connector. The old version here, you could actually get with just a straight-in connector, and that was a little harder to manage putting into someone's pocket. No, it was a nice connector, and the new one is actually just as nice here. The new version of the mic also comes with a windscreen. Now this windscreen is not actually going to do a whole lot for you in terms of cutting wind noise if you're working with it outdoors, if there's any sort of subs substantial amount of wind, but it is good for taming the microphone's high frequency response a little bit. So if you're finding it, it's a little too sibilant for you, then putting the windscreen on can actually reduce that a little bit, tiny bit. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Just to give you an idea of the size of this mic, here is the new Giant Squid relative to the Audio-Technica AT899. The AT899 is actually a considered a miniature, and so it's a little bit smaller, or it may actually be called sub-miniature, but in any case, you can see it's a little bit smaller. I don't see the size of this mic as being a problem, but just so that you're aware, it is a little bit larger than some of the other more expensive miniature and sub-miniature lavaliers. We've uh, brought the giant squid outside and I've got it actually underneath my shirt here, just here. And the, uh, the idea here is to test how it works outdoors, especially in cases where it's windy. Now today there's a breeze. Um, I would say it's probably a 10 mile an hour breeze. So not, not a, it's not gale force, but it is enough. This is probably not unusual if you're gonna be shooting outdoors in a lot of circumstances. So I had to, what was curious about it is I had to bring the input level down on the Zoom H1 relative to what I had it set out in the studio. So I don't know what's going on there, but in this case, I found that I need to drop the input level to about 60 out of 100. And when I was shooting in the studio previously, I had it set at 75, I think it was. So kind of an interesting difference. I don't understand that entirely, but 
that's what we're getting. So this is what it sounds like. Okay, now here is the really nerdy part. So <laughs> again, if you're not really into this, go back and take a look at the short version of the review if you just want the bottom line and to know kind of the practical features. But what we're gonna look at here is the self noise generated by each of the mics. And I would, I would call this sort of the practical noise floor because what I've done here is I've recorded the same thing um, for the new Giant Squid, the old Giant Squid, and also with the Rode NT1A. Now, it's not a fair comparison against the one NT1A um, for a number of reasons. That's a very different mic. It's a large diaphragm condenser mic. It is billed as one of the quietest in the industry in terms of self noise. It um, totally different mic. It's going into a different preamp, so it's going into my Focusrite Sapphire Pro 24 DSP audio interface, whereas the both Giant Squids are going into a Zoom H1. Um, the other difference is that the new Giant Squid, and this is a kind of an interesting and important point to note, the new Giant Squid is not as hot of a mic. And what I mean by that is that the, the input level is not quite as strong as the old Giant Squid was. So what that means is that the input level on your preamp needs to be a little bit higher. On the Zoom H1, for example, in this case, to get about these same levels here on the new and the old Giant Squids, I had to set the new Giant Squid to an input level of 75 out of 100 on the Zoom H1, and the old Giant Squid I could set to 65 out of 100 on the Zoom H1. So that's gonna influence the noise floor, definitely, because you're, you're gonna introduce a little bit more noise from the preamp itself. So again, this is not a, like a pure measure of the microphone, but it's a more of a practical measure of what you're going to get, kind of getting the roughly the same levels in the end. So we brought these two signals in, or all three of these signals in. We've normalized them so that the peaks are up at the top and everything else comes up in relation to that. And what I've done here is we've recorded a period of silence and I've gone ahead and just highlighted that in each of them. You can see here. And then what I did is I actually went up to this uh, window and chose amplitude statistics. This is an interesting little thing here. And what this shows us here is that for the period selected, it shows us the average RMS amplitude. Now what that is is um, actually it's, it's, I don't entirely understand 100%, but it's an average root mean square amplitude. So that's gonna tell us the average level through this period that we've selected and uh, amplitude, and that's the loudness, if you will. Um, so here, for example, on the old giant squid, we measured that at minus 59.8 dB. So that's our one measure there. On the new giant squid, we measured that at minus 56 dB. Now remember, the closer you get to zero, the louder it is. So what we're seeing here is that the noise level on the new giant squid is a little bit more than on the old giant squid. And then just to kind of use as a, a basis of comparison. Again, it's not a fair comparison, but to compare it to a mic such as the Rode NT1A, that had a root average root mean square amplitude of minus 66. So it's quite a bit quieter than either one of these other two mics. So then the next thing that I looked at here, which was kind of interesting, here's the old giant squid again. In this case, the maximum amplitude during this period of silence was minus 47. And on the new giant squid, the maximum was minus 50. So the old one actually got noisier at certain points. Um, and it was just sort of spiky. In fact, if you look at the waveform here, you notice it's a little spikier. So it actually got louder at certain points, but overall on average, it was quieter than the new one. So what does this mean in practical terms? In practical terms, I think it means not much difference at all. Um, just from a subjective point of view, using both of these mics now, I haven't found noise to be a problem on either one of them in practical use, getting them, you know, your levels up to the max and, and pushing your preamp to the, to the level where you can get a good signal out of it. Um, but technically there is a little bit of a difference. The new version has kind of a constant higher level noise than the old version, but the old version had less average noise, but had louder spikes within its periods of silence. So more, the, the self noise was kind of more spiky. And again, practical uses, I've never found hiss to be a problem with either one of these mics. So I would say, I don't know, draw, maybe the new one is a little bit noisier, but I don't think it's going to be a problem in practical use for dialogue. Now, the next thing I wanted to look at was frequency response. And frequency response is 
um, kind of an interesting, interesting thing. The concept with frequency response here is here you have your lower frequencies down at the bottom of the graph, and at the top you have your higher frequencies. So these are going to be your bass, and these are going to be your trebles. And uh, what we've got here, this is actually the new giant squid with a measure here. And the way this heat map works is, in essence, um, the yellow means it's more intense, and the uh, reds and purples mean it's not nearly as intense. So what we're seeing here is that we're getting plenty of base information down here. And then we're also getting a little bit less, but definitely some uh, higher frequency information up here. So we, we definitely hear that when we listen to this new Giant Squid Audio Labs lav mic. Um, you get a nice, low, rich low end. And you also seem to have some, some nice... Uh, air, if you will, or the higher frequency stuff. The The way I've heard it described often is air, or it sounds more open, or more, um, I don't know, flat. flat's not necessarily the right word, but it definitely sounds more open, or has more air. Let's compare that just to, for reference again, to the NT1A. The NT1A actually, in my opinion, has this beautiful, rich low end, but it also has a somewhat sibilant high end. And the sibilance range for most people I think is going to be in this 5.5k up to maybe 11k so in this range here and you can see here there's definitely more yellows in here which is more intense relative to the giant squid just a little bit more not a whole ton more but definitely a little bit more and then the old giant squid here you'll notice there's hardly any yellow information up here at all which means you're not capturing nearly as much high frequency information and i and i'll be honest with the old giant squid well, for a $40 mic, it sounded really nice. It had this really nice, rich low end. It sometimes seemed a little stuffy, kind of like it didn't have enough high-frequency response. There wasn't any air to it. Um, and it sometimes almost even sounded like maybe you were in a little bit of a tunnel. So I'm actually, in this case, I'm happier with the new Giant Squid. I feel like you get a little bit more air, you get a little more high-frequency response. It sounds a little bit more natural um, and a little less... Um, kind of, na uh, not nasally, but stuffy than the old version. So that's, uh, again, that's subjective and it's up to you. you. We can see there is a difference here though. The new, this is the old version again, not much yellow information up here, which means not as intense in the higher frequencies. And on the new version, we are seeing a little bit more yellow up here in the, in the higher frequencies. So there is a little bit of a difference there. And this is going to come down to per personal preference. Personally for me, I think the new one, one sounds a little bit more even a little bit more real and uh, it captures a little more of the high frequency without going overboard without getting super super sibilant like um, the Rode NT1A tends to. First let's cover the cons on this mic from my perspective in my couple of weeks of use of the mic. There aren't very many. Number one I think is that as we saw in that last clip there the this is not the most noise-free mic um, it is a little bit, on average, noisier than the old version of the same mic, and it certainly doesn't compare to much more expensive, uh, better engineered, better manufactured mics. So I, um, it's important to keep that in perspective. I still think it's very usable, and I think for a $40 roughly US mic, it's still very good. And I'm kind of stretching here, but the only other real kind of downside I see with this mic is, is the body is kind of largish, so it's a little bit imposing if that's important to you, and it may or may not be. Um, however, this mic can be used under the clothing as well if you really need to hide it. Now let's talk about the pros, and there are a number of these. Um, I think the probably the most important thing is that really the audio quality that this mic produces for its price is pretty impressive. And i am really been happy with it, and even on the old version over the last several years, really been happy with its quality and its performance. And I think that the new version is even a little bit better than the old version. The build quality is fantastic, uh, both in terms of the mic head itself looks very professional, nice fit and finish. The uh, cable is very nice, the adjustable clip is nice, and the angled plug connector, all top quality. I think they really put some thought into the design of this mic, certainly more than the older version. Uh, the standard angled plug now is really nice for connecting it to a field recorder and sliding it into a pocket. And the, the adjustable clip is super nice as well, L much more flexible than the older version. The frequency response on the new version of the mic is much better than the old version. I think the fact that it picks up much more of the mid and high frequencies is really uh, makes it a much more versatile mic. In the past, with the old version, the problem I had with it 
that I didn't realize when I did the initial review was that once you stick it underneath clothing, like for example, when you're outdoors or you need to hide the mic, uh, the old version really sounded pretty muffled. This new version, which is more sensitive in the higher frequencies, works much better in those circumstances. You can put it under the clothing, and yes, it will muffle some of the higher frequency, but since it's more sensitive in that range, you get a better overall response. So I really think that's a plus on this version and definitely a step up from the old version. Now, if you do find that that higher frequency or that more sensitive frequency response in the higher frequencies becomes a little bit of a problem, you start getting a little too much sibilance, it also does come with a windscreen, uh, this little foam thing, and that'll do a little bit towards mellowing that out just a little bit. The output level is decent. It is lower than the older version, but still very much in the usable range. Also the noise floor, again, as we mentioned, um, while it is definitely a little bit noisier on average than the previous version, it is definitely still in the very usable range. So again, for this price range, I'm f I would say that this noise floor performance is actually pretty decent. And then one last thing as well is that sometimes with lavalier mics you get a little bit of handling noise. So when your talent starts to move around, the cable can start to create noise in the mic itself and you'll, you'll capture that noise. And I'm not finding that to be a big issue with this mic. Um, I didn't find it to be a big issue with the last one, although some other people did say that they had issues with that. Um, I'm finding this one about the same as the last one. I, I, don't have pro I haven't had any problems with it yet. And um, let me know if you do have problems with it. Let the rest of our little community know here if you are running into that problem, but I have not run into that problem yet. So overall, this is a fantastic mic, especially for the price, approximately $40 US. We've got links for all the things we've talked about below, including the mic, the extension cable, all that business. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk with you soon.